Let's talk a little bit more about pellagra or even pre-pellagra, right? So like think of this not as just pellagra because pellagra, what's, what is pellagra? It's end stage disease. End stage, what does that mean? End stage is where the disease is very advanced and very progressed. What about pre-prolagra? This is some of the symptoms that you might develop before you get to the severity of dermatitis and the severity of, of cognitive decline or diarrhea. So some of these things here might happen kind of pre that. So we look at, at hair loss is, is an example of a symptom that niacin deficiency can cause. So if you're struggling with hair loss and don't know why, get your niacin levels measured. Mouth sores, uh, we see the same thing by the way, tongue inflammation like glossitis or swelling of the tongue and mouth sores. Vitamin B2 will also do this. So will iron deficiency and so will vitamin B6 deficiency too. So, so these kind of three, and it's interesting because these three work together. So remember niacin is vitamin B3, right? And so B2, B3, iron and B6 all work together in tandem to help, to, to help with the, the protection of the oral cavity. So mouth sores, tongue inflammation, known to be caused by those deficits. Weakness and fatigue. This is probably, in my experience, one of the earliest to detect. And, and it, it's, it's a vague set of symptoms, right? What is it? Weakness and fatigue. You're just tired all the time. And, you, you know, this is one of the reasons why people feel better when they take a B complex. When you struggle with kind of constant fatigue, even though you're eating right, you're sleeping well, you're doing everything well, right? And you take that B complex, which has got B2 and it's got B3 and it's got B6, and you start feeling better. Your energy levels can actually come up. Your, your strength can start to return. Your stamina can start to return. So again, weakness and fatigue, very early symptom, not so much a late stage. And then we've got anxiety, depression, and mood swings. Now, something that's interesting about vitamin B3, so all vitamins and all minerals are what we would deem to be essential. What does essential mean? Essential means you can't survive without it. That's what we mean when we say essential vitamin or essential nutrient. Your body cannot sustain its function without that nutrient. And so essential means that, in essence, you have to eat it. Your body can't synthesize it. Now, niacin is different in this regard because your body can actually synthesize niacin. It can make it if you have enough tryptophan. Now, you may have heard of this before, right? Tryptophan, it's in the turkey at Thanksgiving. It's, you know, what is kind of always talked about is that containing the ingredient that helps make people sleepy and tired, right? When they eat that turkey at trip, that with rich in tryptophan, we can actually, humans, can make niacin from tryptophan. So we can convert tryptophan to niacin. So technically, it's niacin's essential, but it's less essential because our body does have a way if we're getting enough tryptophan to get adequate to produce niacin. The problem with the conversion is that conversion is inefficient. It's, it's, uh, and so what happens is it depends, right? So like it's very inefficient if you're following vegetarian diet. Um, and there are a number of reasons why, but it's less efficient when you're following a plant-based and all plant-based diet, more specifically vegan diet, not, not like a lacto or an ovo vegetarian or a pesca vegetarian, but more specifically vegan. That process becomes less efficient. In part, it's because your protein needs are, are, are potentially not being met as adequately. Uh, and tryptophan is predominantly found in meat as a source of food in the diet. So again, that's not to say you can't do it on a vegetarian diet, but it is something to, to look out for. Now, you can make tryptophan or you can convert tryptophan into niacin. It's inefficient here. It's also inefficient when you have, even if you eat meat, even if you aren't vegetarian per se, but if, you're, if your protein counts are too low. So if you're eating less protein than what your body requires, we'll, we'll see this a lot in, in people that are athletes or that aggressively work out and they won't hit their protein high enough. We'll start to see hair loss. That'll be one of the first symptoms. We'll start to see the weakness and the fatigue set in, right? And part of that is because of this conversion. And part of that is because they need more protein to heal and repair the muscles that are being damaged through the working out and they're not getting adequate quantities of that. So, and remember your hair's a protein. And so, and so that is gonna play a role there. But, but anyway, the tryptophan can convert into niacin, there's a, there's a long pathway, biochemical pathway, where the body is capable of doing that, but it's inefficient 
with certain kinds of diets, it also can be very inefficient overall anyway. So even if you're, again, if you're not even a vegetarian, it can be an inefficient process where you, the conversion is 60 to 1. So, you know, 60 to 1 is a conversion. And some people say that, that that conversion process is very slow and it doesn't work very quickly. So this is why we consider vitamin B3 really to be essential as a, because, because even though we could get it from, from tryptophan, we can't get enough, right? And you get into certain situations like pregnancy or breastfeeding ladies uh, or guys heavy aggressive workouts where you're, you're not gonna get adequate or high speed enough conversion for this to happen effectively without actually getting foods that are rich in niacin. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, other symptoms of niacin deficiency, gas, bloating, and digestion. So before the major diarrhea sets in, you know, you get, the early symptoms of gas bloating and indigestion. And then numbness and tingling, numbness in the pain, hands and feet. So this is the neuro neuropathy, right? B vitamin deficiencies, uh, not just niacin, but, but B2 and B6 and B12 and folate, they can all cause numbness and tingling in the hands and feet and pain in the hands and feet. It's very common for B vitamin deficiencies to cause that. And then again, we get over here into the later stages, diarrhea, Okay, skin inflammation, which we talked about, mental confusion and dementia can start to develop. We'll see oftentimes too, migraine-like headaches, photosensitivity, and there's actually an interesting that, um, well, we won't, it's too confusing biochemically, we won't get into that, but, but um, light sensitivity, meaning when you go outside and you try, to, you try to, you know, look, just look, you have to wear sunglasses or you have to keep your eyes, you know, protected with a ball cap or something because you're super sensitive to light. Well, this can all happen. Skin sensitivity to sunlight can also happen as a result of niacin deficiency as well. So these are kind of the bulk of symptoms. These, these, these ones right down here on the bottom are really kind of your later stage, more advanced things to look out for. And we talked about this diagram already. We talked about, the, you know, the function, the, the regenerative capacity of niacin and its important role and regulating glutathione but hey don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here make sure you hit subscribe below and as always thanks for tuning in